What we have here on this bank and across the river is the expression of the energy of the river. The river wants to move downstream to Puget Sound and I-5 isn't letting it. And so it's trying to find that path, the easiest path for it. And right now, the way it's finding it is by cutting through these banks, which if you look at it, just basically river silt and river gravels. So there's not a lot of substance there. And our concern is that the energy isn't effectively and efficiently being transferred because I-5 is blocking that energy and blocking water and blocking sediment and blocking habitat features. And what we're seeing over time is that the salinity is changing. It's becoming more like Puget Sound. The salinity is getting higher. The area for the fish to slowly adapt is getting smaller. And so it's going to have an impact on the survival of our Chinook salmon over time. You know, 10 years ago, there'd be days where we'd have a couple hundred fish within the first hour or two of us fishing. And you know, the last year, my brother and I, uh, we fished for four weeks, and I think we caught 100 fish total, if that. And you know, times have definitely changed about the way we fish on the river, how many days we fish on the river. But for me, for, for the focus that I see is that we need to focus on sustainability and making sure we have this resource. Well, certainly one of the risks at the site we're standing on is that the river could actually continue to move downstream, give up the upstream movement, and punch through I-5 north and southbound lanes on the Pierce County side of I-5, um, which would be devastating for the local economy and for national security and for all, all kinds of reasons. And that, that risk is real. We've evaluated it through some professional studies. And within the next 17 years, the Nisqually River will be up against I-5 in that location. So we're hopeful to get ahead of that problem and do some proactive uh, restoration work and, um, and account for the fact that we've got a problem here and, and deal with it in a, in a way that solves the economy problem and transportation problem, but also deals with the environmental issues as well. The problem with this area, it is the Achilles heel of the I-5 system in Western Washington because there are no good alternatives to bypass it. We're impacted by the military installation, which has its own restrictions, and by the sound. And if you recall back in December 2017 when the train derailed, the traffic problems for those few days before we could clear that up was a 20 minute drive took six hours because the only alternative is to go through Yelm around 510 and when all the traffic that typically goes on I-5 goes that way, it really backs up. So back when the road was originally built, it was built on piers. You can actually see some of them behind me. But when those uh, piers were replaced in the 69-70 time frame, uh, landfill was put under I-5 right at the Nisqually Delta. And that's causing a backup of sediment because the water can't freely flow under the highway anymore. So we're hoping we can remove that landfill as part of this effort and increase the capacity of I-5 both north and southbound. We're hoping that with President Biden's infrastructure bill, some version of that will get approved and uh, we could target this project, which is probably going to be something in the vicinity of $4 billion to make all the required changes. I know it's expensive, but I think it needs to be prioritized for this region. I mean, I-5 is the lifeline of commerce for this, for this South Sound region and all the way up through Seattle, King County. They're delivering commerce through these trucks to the Port of Tacoma every day. And so that's where the challenge is. Right now, it is a, it's a diked and, and bermed uh, blockage of water movement. But now that we see it, we have an opportunity to do something about it and be proactive. And the Nisqually tribe is really interested in being proactive and not waiting for the disaster to occur and have I-5 taken out by a flood event.